Praise God. Amen. Amen. It's wonderful to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus is right here with us this evening. Um, I'd like to speak to us. Uh, I think, you know, one of the subjects that the Lord placed on my heart uh, when, I, when I got a reminder six minutes ago. <laughs> when I got a reminder six minutes ago of this particular meeting. Because we were meant to start about three weeks ago, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, thank God we're here today. Yeah, just celebrate it. <laughs> yeah, thank God we're here today. So the, the, the word that the Lord placed on my heart, um, it's, it's a word to do with forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So because it's a word to do with forgiveness, therefore it's a word to do with relationships. Because that's what God is all about. God is about relationships. You know, God is relational. He wants to have a relationship with his children. And he wants his children to have a wonderful relationship with the people around them. Mm -hmm. You know, he wants them to have a wonderful relationship about, with, with the people around them. And, 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 and when, we, when, when we speak on this, on this subject to do with, uh, with relationships, you get to realize that happiness is a way of the cross. Because happiness is all about relationships. Yes. Like if you're going to be happy in this life, mm. it's all about relationships. Mm. Like, it's, like, like it's not about, um, happiness is not about, it's not about a what, it's not about a thing. It's about people. <laughs> you know, you can have just about everything else in this world. Mm -hmm but may never get to experience joy, may never get to experience happiness. No wonder why you realize or you hear stories of people who, who seemingly have just about everything in life, but committing suicide, and you just don't understand it. Mm. Like you have everything. As you observe from a distance, as far as you're concerned, they have everything. Oh and, and, and you're like, they should be happy. Yes. You know, like these people should be happy. You know, and I, and I would like to think that amongst our people, there's this word they use for money, which is strong. And they say, these people are toned up. <laughs> but strangely enough, the toned up people are miserable. Yes. Because the joy and the happiness does not come from things, but it comes from relationships. And the first key significant, most, relation, most important relationship is the relationship with God. Amen, yes. That's the most important relationship. Because that relationship then determines the kind of relationships you're going to have with the people around you. Mm -hmm. That's why they say that the way to happiness is the way of the cross. You know, so the, it is the way of the cross. Amen. Jesus is the key for us to have healthy relationships with the people around us. Mm -hmm. And, and, some, and sometimes that starts from a place of forgiveness. And first of all, understanding that God has actually forgiven us. Amen. Yes. God has actually forgiven us. And we need to realize that. Sometimes we judge and we condemn ourselves, and yet God has already forgiven us. And the only thing that he's saying, he's saying, Oh ye that are, you know, that are heaven laden, come and I will give you rest. Yes. There is that rest that is found in Jesus. Mm. There is that peace that is mm. found in Christ. And so, on this particular subject of forgiveness, there's a scripture that is in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, um, verse 14. Book of Matthew. Yes, Matthew 6, verse 14. I'd like to believe it's somewhat a very common portion of scripture. If reason it says, if, if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. This is verse 6. 14. Chapter, chapter, chapter 6, verse 14. 14. If you forgive people their trespasses, your God in heaven will also forgive you. Because of that, we would recite the Lord's Prayer, isn't it? And in the Lord's Prayer, it, uh, it, it goes on and it says, Forgive me, even as I forgive those who trespass against me. In other words, I've made a condition right there. That the only way that I should be forgiven is when I am a forgiving person myself. Is, is, is when I'm a forgiving person. So I, as an individual, need to come to that particular place in my life where I make a decision to forgive those that have hurt me. To forgive those that have hurt me. There are people that are sick today. Sick. And they are probably hospitalized. And they are sick because of bitterness. They are sick because of anger. They are sick 
Because the only thing that they were supposed to do was to forgive. And even if, maybe if they had to make a decision today to say, I make the choice to forgive, they can actually release themselves from the sickness that they're in right now. Like to some extent, they're probably expecting someone to lay hands on them and pray for them. But the only thing that they may just need to do is just to forgive. Amen. It's just to forgive. Like the only thing, the, the only thing that is probably, that is, because when you look at it very carefully, uh, you know, there's this statement from Madiba, um, the former president of South Africa, the uh, late Nelson Mandela. I mean, he says, forgiveness liberates the soul. Yes. Forgiveness liberates the soul. soul. Which simply means that if a person is unforgiven, <laughs> they have incarcerated themselves. Mm -hmm. They have thrown themselves in a penitentiary. They have imprisoned themselves. Mm -hmm. Failing to forgive is simply imprisoning yourself. Mm -hmm. In other words, you become stuck in a moment. It's probably an issue that happened 15 years ago, 20 mm -hmm. years ago. But as far as you're concerned, you know, you, are, you have not yet forgiven. You, are, you have not forgiven. You are not making the choice to forgive. Therefore, you are stuck in that particular moment. And as you are stuck in that particular moment, the person you are choosing not to forgive is actually progressing. Mm -hmm. The person you are choosing not to forgive is actually moving forward in their life. And they are doing well and they are healthy. Yes. And here you are, you are getting sick by the day because you are choosing not to to forgive. You know, this is what they say. They say that failing to forgive is just as good as taking poison and expecting someone else to die. That's foolish. If you take poison, guess who's going to die? You are the one who is going to die. You're the one that is going to die. The one that takes the poison is the one that dies. So you have to come to that place in your life where you say, I need to make a decision and I need to make a decision to forgive. So on this particular subject of forgiveness, there's a story in the Bible, and this is the story of a master who had his, who had his servants, and, his, um, and one of his servants owed him a lot of money, owed him a lot of money, and the master decided that he was going to pardon uh, his servant. He decided to let go of his debt, but the very same servant who was owed and was pardoned for that which he owed had someone who owed him a very little very small, minute, tiny, something really insignificant compared to that which he owed. And when, when, he, when, he, when he then encountered the person who owed him, this is what he did. He gave that person hell because he wanted him to pay for that which he owed him. Forgetting that he owed a lot and he was forgiven. Forgive, forgetting that he was pardoned for that which he owed. So when it then landed in the ears of the master, the master made a decision to say that which was previously upon him, that which I had forgiven him of, we are now putting it back on him and throw him in prison because he is heartless, choosing not to forgive someone who owes him a very little thing. Like in, 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 in this particular situation, the one who has forgiven us is God. He has forgiven us of everything that we have ever done. Sometimes our children choose not to forgive us, isn't it? Our children are angry and they're mad at us. They don't even want to talk to us. You know, they don't even check on us. Because they're angry and they're mad at us. Probably because of choices that we did when we were a bit young. We were young and irresponsible. And whatever we did, it wasn't meant to hurt them, but it did hurt them. And they're choosing not to forgive. But guess what? God has already forgiven us for those things. Yes. God has already forgiven us for those things. And it is now left for our kids to also get to learn to understand that, hey, forgiveness is key. Forgiveness is really important. And you holding this thing against me, you're not doing yourself any favor. You're not doing yourself any good. Maybe you, maybe you could have been doing well financially right now. But because of, because you are harboring bitterness and unforgiveness, things are not moving in your life. And then you start calling your mama a witch, like she's a witch, and she's the reason why things are not happening in my life. Isn't it like mothers are now being called witches because things in their children's lives are not moving, but the reason why the, reason why the things are not moving in the children's life is because the children are unforgiving. 
And the only thing that they need to understand is that they need to just forgive. And then doors will begin to open in their lives. Mm -hmm. But as far as they're concerned, some would, would rather have somebody give them a wristband and tell them that this wristband is going to protect you, this wristband is going to make you prosperous, mm -hmm. or this or that is going to make you wealthy. Mm -hmm. Without knowing, like, no, it's not the wristband that's going to make you prosperous. <laughs> the only thing is you need to follow a simple <clears throat> principle. And the principle is forgive. <laughs> forgive and love. <laughs> forgive and love those who may have who may have wronged you such that you may be able to progress. Such that you may be able to progress. So this is a really uh, important thing for us to understand that people need to learn to forgive in order for them to be able to in order for them to be able to progress in their own personal lives. And, and there's this one thing that happens um, amongst people, and that is when you hear the subject of forgiving, you as, an, you as a person, you feel like, no, I'm, I'm a very forgiving person. Mm -hmm. And you tell yourself that I have nothing against anybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have actually forgiven them. But the reason why you're saying that is because the name of the person in person has not been mentioned. Mm -hmm. The reason why you feel like you're a really forgiving person is because you have not seen the person that actually did wrong you. So you're convinced that you're a forgiving person yeah. till the name of that person is mentioned. If there's rage on the inside of you, if there's anger on the inside of you, if there's bitterness on the inside of you, if there is malice on the inside of you at the mention of that particular person's name, that is nothing but just a sign that you have not forgiven the individual. Mm -hmm. So it is easy to say I have forgiven and I have nothing against anybody uh, until the name of that particular person is mentioned. Until you see them. Until you see them. <laughs> you see them and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden something they did 15 years ago, it feels as though it happened just now. Mm -hmm. In that very moment, you feel the pain of the very same things that they did. And it is a sign that you have not forgiven. So it is, it is at that particular time where you're supposed to cry out to God and say, God, I need this grace. I need the grace to forgive. Mm -hmm. Like, you, what, what you, what you just have to be honest with God and say, I am, I am hurting right now. I am in pain right now. By just seeing them, I am reminded of all those things that they did to me. I am reminded of all those things they did to me. And then God might just pull a scripture for you from the book of Genesis. Uh, should be Genesis 50 verse 20. If not, Genesis 20 verse 50. Where, uh, where, where God says, That which they meant for evil, God has turned it around for your good. Amen. To some extent, when you make the choice to forgive... It is, it is at that particular point that you'll be able to see the beauty in the negative things that they may have done towards you. There's beauty in everything. Someone does something bad to you, but there's something good out of it that you can get if only you pay attention to God. If only you pay attention to God, you'll be able to see the good things. Because in this particular instance, we are looking at the, like when you look at the book of Genesis, that particular story is the story of the man Joseph, mm. isn't it? Yes. Who was thrown into a pit by his own brothers. brothers yes. His own brothers. Yeah. And one amazing thing about Joseph is that Joseph made a choice to forgive them. I would like to believe the very same day they threw him into the pit. Mm -hmm. I would like to believe that he made a choice to forgive them. So in other words, in as much as Joseph was thrown into a pit, mm -hmm. in as much as he was thrown into a pit, he did not, he did not begin to dwell on the fact that he was, he was neglected and he was hated and he was thrown into a pit and left to die. Mm -hmm. He did not start reminiscing and thinking about how his brother hated him so much. Mm -hmm. I would like to personally believe <coughs> that when Joseph was in the pit, this is not in scripture, this is just my personal belief, mm -hmm. <laughs> that as he was in the pit, 
He must have been singing praises to God. Amen. He must have been having a good time all by himself in the pit. Amen. Because he knew that whatever it is that his, his brothers may have meant for evil, God is going to turn it around for my good. Amen. I'm like, I, don't think, I don't think that the Ishmaelites were walking around shaking and peace to find out what's in that pit. Because there are probably so many pits <laughs> during that particular time. So they must have heard somebody singing praises and wonder what is going on. We hear a melodious voice. Someone is praising God. But it sounds as though they're in a pit. And then they went and they picked them up. And it's not a scripture. This is just my personal okay. <laughs> conviction. <laughs> and, 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 and then they got there and they found him. They found him in the pit. Mm -hmm. And they took him. And there he was. He was sold as a slave to Potiphar. And as he was in Potiphar's house, he wasn't miserable. <laughs> Joseph wasn't miserable. The reason why I'll say Joseph wasn't miserable, because what happens is that people do you wrong, and then you spend a lot of time thinking about the wrong that they have done, and you become depressed and miserable. And, and, and the crazy thing is, when you think about it too much, you even start hearing voices. <laughs> you know, you start hearing voices all by yourself with nobody else in that room. You start hearing voices because you are depressed. You're in a place where you are so depressed because of the bad things mm. that people have done towards you. Amen. But I like to strongly believe that when Joseph was in that, when, when, when he was in Potiphar's house, he was a happy young man, mm -hmm. regardless of what his brothers had done to him. Mm. So as he was in that place, he was, a, he was a happy man because you realize that Potiphar himself attributes his wealth to Joseph. Mm -hmm. He says, the reason why I am blessed is because of Joseph. I mean, I don't think that anybody would look around in his house and look, at the, look for the most miserable person in his house and say, this miserable person who's always crying is the reason why I am blessed. That's not possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he, sh he should have been a jolly good fellow, enjoying though he was a slave, doing everything as though he was serving God, and serving his master as though he was serving God, though he was a slave. Mm -hmm. And something unfortunate happens <laughs> to Joseph. There he is, he's accused, he is accused by Potiphar's, he's accused by Potiphar's wife, and then he is thrown into prison. He is thrown into prison. And though he was thrown into prison, guess what? He wasn't miserable when he was in prison. Mm -hmm. he, must have, he must have maintained the same attitude he had when he was in the pit. They had done to him. This is why you see there's so much progress in Joseph's life. Mm -hmm. There is so much progress in his life. Because he is not focused on that which has happened to him. No, he's not focusing on the bad and the negative things that have happened to him. He's focusing on the positive things. So there he was in prison and now he is given charge over all prisoners. I don't think anyone would promote somebody and give him such a responsibility if he was a miserable person. Mm. He must have been a jolly good fellow. Enjoying himself in prison. And there he was in prison and he showed love. You know, he had so much love for himself, so it was pretty much easy for him to extend that love to others. Mm -hmm. So he sees these two, you know, who were once employed in the king's palace. He sees the cab bearer and, and the backer, and he sees them looking so miserable one morning. And then he goes to them and he wonders, why are you guys so miserable? The only way you can see that someone else is miserable is when you're happy, mm -hmm. when you are doing well. Because when you are miserable yourself, you can't even see other people are miserable. And your intention is probably to make other people much more miserable than you already are. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're not, you're not interested in making anybody happy. You're not interested in hearing anybody's story. Mm -hmm. So there he was. He was a jolly good fellow enjoying himself and he sees these two miserable guys. He probably tried making them laugh a bit and he realized these guys ain't laughing. So he really wondered what was wrong with them and then they told them that he had they had dreams and the other one shared his dream and unfortunately mm. for the back it was a terrible one in three days your head is going to be chopped off which was a terrible dream uh, but hey <laughs> um, and then for the for the cup bearer in three days you're going to be reinstated you're going to be saving in the king's palace again and when you are there serving in the king's palace please remember me you know, he knew, that, he knew that God was up to something. God was going to do something amazing for him, regardless of the journey that he had taken. It was a, it was a, tough, it was a tough road. It wasn't easy. You know, but he maintained joy. He maintained being happy at all times. And he treated the people around him with love 
and with respect. And he made a decision, most importantly, to forgive the ones who initially placed him in that position. Because deep down on the inside of him, he knew that whatever it is that you have meant for evil, God is going to turn it around. For my good. God is going to turn it around for my good. So whatever the situation is, this has to be your mindset that God is going to turn it around for my good. He is a faithful God. He's a God that never leaves nor forsakes any of his children. You tell yourself, I am not forsaken. I am not forgotten. I would like to believe that he, as he was right there in that peak, he told himself, in as, in as much as though it feels like I am forsaken, I am forgotten, but I am not forsaken. And I am not forgotten. My God is right here with me in this speech. And I'm sure he said the same thing when he was in prison. Because when he was in Potiphar's house, when he was in prison, he knew that he was not forgotten. And he was not forsaken. And he did not spend time thinking about the bad things that had been done to him. Spending time thinking about the wrong that has been done to you would just limit you from progressing. It would just limit your progress. Like, for instance, there, there are some people that are whooped on drugs, and the reason why they're whooped on drugs is because they believe their parents never liked them, or so and so didn't like them, you know, like they were not loved, everybody hated me, and you know, so now I'm escaping, I'm running away, you know, and, and, and now they, they escape, and then they're the ones who are not progressing, they're the ones who are not advancing, they're the ones who are deteriorating on a daily basis. You know, simply because they are spending time thinking about the negative things that so-and-so has done to them. So never spend time thinking about the negative things that other, peop other people may have done to you. But spend time thinking about what exactly is God doing in this situation. Because God is right there and he's doing something in your favor. Just like, he did, just like he did for Joseph. Amen. You know, and there's that, there's, that, there's that scripture that tells us that all things work together for good. For those who love the Lord and are called to his purposes. Yes. Just like they say, you know, when you take toothpaste out of the toothpaste, uh, out of the tube, yeah. out of you the can't tube, put it back. You can't put it back. Mm -hmm. Even if you try, mm -hmm. you're still going to have, you know, some residues and you're still going to have the smell. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly the very same thing with words that have been saved. That you can't take your words back. You can't say, I'm taking my words back. You know, they've already gone out. And they have done more damage already. Mm. So. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, forgiveness is key. Forgiveness, yeah. Mm. That's where you actually have to ask. When you ask the Lord to forgive you first, mm. and then it's easy for you to forgive others. Mm. And God has made a provision for our forgiveness yeah. through His Son, Jesus <coughs> Christ. Yeah who died on the cross for all of our sins, mm. past, present, and future. Mm. He has covered everything. Mm. So in other words, there is no point in my life I should feel condemned, mm. but I should feel loved by God. Amen, yes. And I should feel forgiven by God. Mm. And if I fall, if I make a mistake, I should be able to go back before the throne of grace mm. and cry with, with true remorse, with sincere you know, repentance, yeah. <laughs> you know, like I, I'm really sorry, God, for what yeah. I did from a repentant heart. Yeah. And when you do it from a repentant heart, it means that you're not going to do it again, yeah. <laughs> you know, and you know, you're really sorry for what you did and you don't intend to do it again. Yeah. And when you, and as you fall, you always remind yourself that God, you know, as long as you're still alive, <laughs> you can still make up with God, yeah. you know, as long as you still have breath. You can still make up with God. And he's always right there. He's always waiting. Mm -hmm. He's just waiting to make right with you. <laughs> you know, the moment you say, Father, here I am <laughs> to make right, <laughs> and he'll be there, and he'll make right with you. And the yeah. only thing that you have to do is just ask for that um, forgiveness from a repentant heart. Mm -hmm. But you're forgiven. Your forgiveness is already there. But sometimes the only thing that may hinder you from being forgiven is your failure to forgive. Your failure to forgive. Mm. So, if there's any, anything that is selfish that, is in, that you are encouraged to do, is to forgive. Mm. Because you don't do it for someone else, you do it for yourself. Yes. I forgive and I forgive for me. Mm. 
You see, I'm not forgiving you because I love you so much. <laughs> I'm forgiving you because I love myself so much. This is how much I love myself. I love myself so much that I'm making this choice to forgive you. <laughs> I've chosen to forgive because I love myself. <laughs> this is how selfish I am. <laughs> so I'm not going to withhold anything against you. I'm not holding anything against you. You called me selfish. You're so right. I am so selfish. And because of that, I'm actually forgiving you <laughs> for my selfishness. It's a selfish act. And this is one time you are allowed to call me selfish. <laughs> you know, because I am going to selfishly forgive you. I do it for me. I'm not doing it for you. Mm. So which means that if you choose not to forgive, if you choose not to ask for forgiveness, guess what I'm going to do? I'm still going to forgive you anyway. <laughs> You know, like you have not made a deliberate effort to say, I am sorry. In, even though you didn't say you sorry, guess what? I am forgiving you. I'm forcefully doing this one. This one, I will forcefully do. I will forcefully forgive you. <laughs> Whether you have asked for forgiveness or you have not. Because I'm doing it for my own, for my own health. I want to be in good health. <laughs> you see, I don't, want to, I don't want to suddenly develop cancer that I could have avoided simply because I was bitter and angry and mad at somebody. Mm -hmm. So I choose to forgive because I don't want to, I don't want to carry no di disease mm -hmm. as a result of failing to forgive. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm doing it for myself. I am forgiving and I am doing it for me. So, so, so next time they see me, I'm smiling, I'm happy, and my smile is not plastic, it's genuine. Yeah. <laughs> I am so happy, I am happy to see you. In other words, I am starting with you on a new page every day, and I am giving you the benefit of the doubt to do better. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt to do better. I start with you on a new page every day. Mm -hmm. On a new page every day. Like I, I do that I do that a lot with a lot of people, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and I mean, you know that the last time they were talking to you, they were literally calling you and, you know, they were lying. Everything they said was a lie. <laughs> you know it was a lie. <laughs> but you make a choice to just forgive them, forgive the ignorance, yeah. you know, Amen. just yes. like, like I, I know, I know you were calling me when you say this and when you say that, but I'm just making a choice to forgive you. Anyway, let's start on a new page. What's going on today? Oh, it's another con. Okay. <laughs> like, okay, I understand you. I just make the choice to forgive you, you know, because holding, holding what you did to what you did yesterday against you is not going to profit me in any way. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to be stuck. And, and I don't intend to be stuck. My plan is to be progressive. My plan is to be productive. My plan Amen. is to move forward. Amen. My plan is to do the will of God on earth Amen. as it is in heaven. Amen. So I, I'm not going to be wasting time on stuff that is not productive. And to be happy. <clears throat> yes. the joy of the Lord and I plan to be strength. happy. Amen. 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 That the Lord is in control. So anyone wants a prayer, Pastor can just or pray a corporate prayer over us. Yeah, we can all just pray, just pray, pray together, together, yes. Mm -hmm. Thanks. All right. Now, Pastor, thank you. Just cover everyone. Father God, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you. We thank you for allowing us to be in this place at this particular time. And we thank you for the word, the word that has been shared. We know that it is you that was speaking to us directly. It was you that was guiding us in this place today. Father God, in the mighty and holy name of Jesus. And Father God, we pray that which we have received, that which we have heard, that we may take to others. Father God, in the mighty and holy name of Jesus. Father God, that we may preach a message of hope, a message of faith, a message of love, a message of transformation mm -hmm. to others in the mighty and holy name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father God, I pray that you may use us as instruments of righteousness, mm -hmm. cause us to do extraordinary things mm -hmm. during this place where we are residing. Father God, in the mighty and holy name of Jesus, mm -hmm. great are your mercies, great is your love and kindness. Mm -hmm. Father God, in the mighty and holy name of Jesus, use us as instruments of righteousness and cause us to be intercessors. Mm -hmm. Cause us to stand in the gap and pray, Father God, mm -hmm. in the mighty and holy name of Jesus, to pray for our families, Father God, in the mighty and holy name of Jesus, to pray for our grandchildren, mm -hmm. Father God, in the mighty and holy name of Jesus, Father God, that we may intercede for their souls, mm -hmm. 
in the mighty and holy name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father God, there could be somebody that is in this place who is a grand grandchild who's on drugs. Father God, in the mighty and holy name of Jesus. Father God, I pray that you may give them that grace to be able to forgive their grandchild mm -hmm. and stand in prayer for their grandchild. Mm -hmm. In the mighty and holy name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father God, I pray that you know they may have uh, they may have someone who's addicted to something out there, but Father God, that they may choose to forgive that particular individual mm -hmm. and pray and intercede for that person. Father God, in the mighty and holy name of Jesus. Father God, I pray that your children in this place may commit themselves to prayer. Mm -hmm. Father God, in the mighty and holy name of Jesus. Father God, that they may stand in the gate. Mm -hmm. Father God, in the mighty and holy name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father God, that they be they, they be a conduit, Father God, in the mighty and holy name of Jesus, through which their families are blessed. Yes. In the mighty and holy name of Jesus, and in the very same manner I pray, and I say, be Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God, their provider, mm -hmm. the one who meets them continually at their point of need. Be he Jehovah Nisi, the Lord God, the Abana, the miracle worker, the one who fights every one of their battles. Mm -hmm. Be he Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who is forever present mm -hmm. in their lives. Be he Jehovah Shalom, the Lord God, their peace, the one that gives them peace that surpasses human understanding. Mm -hmm. Father God, I pray that you continue to cover them, continue to guide them, continue to lead them by your spirit. Mm -hmm. In the mighty and holy name of Jesus, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy love and kindness, great are your mercies. In Jesus' name, Father God, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Do, do, do you guys mind a group photo? No, we can take that. <laughs> let's, let's, let's have a group photo. We'll be looking for that.